Hello, travel junkies and frequent Flyer Mile nerds. This is Paul, and welcome to the very first episode of the Travel Punks podcast. My inaugural guest, lawyer, world traveler, expat, and owner of Seaboss Coats. Check it out at seabosscoats.com and on Instagram and on Facebook. My friend, Carla. We talk about her expatriation to London, the Joker movie, and the difference in race relations and safety across the pond. Ladies and gentlemen, Carla of Seaboss Coats. It's just... Our perspective of the world is very, very much influenced by where we are in the world. So with airfares being as expensive as they are, and given how little holiday time Americans in general receive from their workplaces, it really is a privilege to be able to travel across an ocean and actually experience another country. But there are opportunities to do it. It just takes a little bit more effort. It takes perhaps a little bit more planning. Mm -hmm. But you can do it. Right. And I told you about the the article I read that I think the title was, it really makes, you're you're showing your privilege when you talk about how people must travel to achieve actuation as a human being. That's a long title. It was something like that. But it kind of caused me to think about how I have been talking about travel. And of course, I focus on using things like miles and points in this channel to make it cheaper. It's just one option. There are others. Uh, Churches send people abroad. There's uh, funds and foundations that send people abroad. My mom is 73 years old. Mm -hmm. She travels several times a year abroad with her church. Mm -hmm. She pays for her own airfare, but she travels with a group doing whatever work in whatever part of the world she's going to Poland next next month. Nice. The Lord's work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, she gets around. Mm-hmm. She, she doesn't care if her husband doesn't come with her. Her husband usually doesn't want to come. That's he the stays spirit. home and she's yeah. gone for weeks doing what she wants. And my mum was a registered nurse in this country. It's not like she was a rich person. Mm-hmm. You know, normal people with regular jobs, can see the world. Yes, I agree with that. I have a lot of friends who are bartenders and waiters and waitresses. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, what can I do? Like, I got to work day to day, paycheck to paycheck. Meanwhile, one of my friends who expatriated to Germany and is working in bars out there put out a Facebook post saying, hey, any of my service industry friends want to live in Germany? (laughs) Because... We're right. hiring people who are full-time English speakers. Right. We, you can do exactly what you're doing in Germany. And you mentioned not caring whether your husband comes along and people are like, oh, I'm married, I have a child, I have a dog, I have a cat, whatever. The, my expatriate friend moved with his cat, by the way. You can do it. Some places you can't, but there are plenty of places where you can. Mm-hmm. But... It comes down in some ways, if you're not from fabulous wealth, it comes down to what are you willing to give up? Right. And I'm not saying give up your children, but you know, they do have diapers in Germany. Right. Children can and do travel. In fact, they benefit from it. My stepsister brings her children abroad. They do fine. They love it. Very, very true. I spent a year abroad in Germany when I was 20. Mm -hmm. I lived with a German family. I learned German. I attended university, and I encountered many Americans in Germany with their children. So it can be done. may not be the easiest thing, Mm -hmm. but it can be done. Yeah, it's about priorities. Yeah. How important is this? And I don't want to kick people while they're down, but sometimes I can't help but think if they're like, it can never happen. That's your privilege. I can't do that the reactionary in me wants to say, well, not with that attitude. And that's kind of mean-spirited, and I don't want to live life that way, but I just want to encourage people to stop saying can't, and then the answers are out there. But I'll also say many people are under tremendous pressure from the families to not break out of their comfort zone. In millions of ways, not just travel. My parents, precisely, when I announced to my parents that I was going to 
do a year abroad in Germany because I'd been given an opportunity. They said, why? Um, you know, they could not understand why I was going. They tried to talk me out of it. They had never done anything like that themselves. I was actually, I was surprised that my mother was vehemently ag against it. She's from Trinidad. When she was 19 years old, her mother put her on an ocean liner, sent her to England to study nursing, because that that's what you did back then. Mm -hmm. And my mum lived in England, attended school, and that's, well, that's how I ended up being born in England. Mm -hmm. My dad was there. They met. They got married. They had me. And then they decided to bring me up in America. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It was, it was quite the uh, struggle. And I said to my parents, I'm paying for this. <laughs> I'm listening to your advice. But ultimately, because I'm paying for this, the decision is mine. You can't stop me from going. And off I went to Germany, stayed there for an entire year, came back, pretty much fluent in German. Well, if you'd wiped out and run out of money, maybe you would have maybe they would have been paying for it then if you were like, Mom, Dad. No. But, I mean, I know you personally, so I, I can't imagine you having done that, and maybe they couldn't have either. But more to the point, you know, there are ways to survive everywhere. Right. You know, if you can figure it out here, there's no reason to doubt that you could figure it out there. Like, very successful people are like, what do I, what, 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 what if I don't make it there? Well, why wouldn't you make it there? Uh, you were a lawyer here, and now you're working uh, in a criminal courthouse in in Great Britain. Right, right. So yeah. If I if I heard you right. Absolutely <laughs> yes. I didn't mention it on the podcast on this special interview, but yes, I am I am working in a magistrate's court preparing witnesses for trial. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they have just as much crime there as we do here. So there's plenty to keep everyone busy. Just less shootings, <laughs> more stabbings. Right. There's plenty of domestic violence, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. People clobbering their girlfriends, sons clobbering their mums. Uh, it's sad. Mm -hmm. And there's so much of an emotional toll to deal with afterwards. Mm -hmm. But that's life. Yeah. You're always going to get friction when you get human beings coming up against each other, rubbing mm -hmm. up against each other, living together. It's life. Well, we have to wrap up soon, but uh, tell me about the coats. Mm. Tell me about the coat company. So Seaboss Coats uh, is my little company. I started it uh, years ago when I was looking for a coat <laughs> to take on a trip to Montreal. <laughs> I thought, okay, we're going to Montreal. It's, it's chilly up there. I, I would love to have a beautiful trench coat. I was willing to pay a lot of money for a nice trench coat. Could not find anything anything on the market that I liked. You know, it wasn't a matter of money. It was a matter of, is this coat flattering? Um, does it have the features that I want? Does it have a, a hood? Are the sleeves long enough? You know? You're such a supermodel. Well, <laughs> I'm tall. And the, the coats that were on the market were about two inches too short for me. And I'm not exorbitantly tall. So I thought, okay, I'm going to design my own trench coat for this trip. I designed it. I took my design to a seamstress. She took a long time <laughs> to put it together, but finally it was perfect. And I started getting compliments on it. So many compliments that I thought, you know what? Other people might like to wear this thing. Let me see if I can mass produce this. And so that's where we are now. Nice. It's in three colors, navy blue, red, and beige. And it's being manufactured in New York City. Hey. So, yeah. A little made, made, it, made in America. Baby steps. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Where can people find them? Seabosscoats.com. Also, I'm on Instagram, Seabosscoats. So, um, yeah, check it out. Awesome. Well, Carla of, C yeah, <laughs> Carla of Seaboss Coats, follow her. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you came back to visit us here in Texas. Uh, we missed you, and we'll hope to see a lot more of you to come. Thank you so much.